Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week 11 of our UBL battles. This is the final week and this is pretty much 100% if I win this, I clinch a seed in the UBL playoffs. If I lose, then I'm pretty positive that I will be mathematically eliminated. So everything is pretty much on this match and this is um, a bit of a risky bring for me. This is one of the only weeks not bringing the Prime Arena and one of the only weeks I've brought the pile of swine, but everything else is fairly standard. Um, the Serena is super important, a rapid spin potential webs away. Meloetta, after it changes forms, does a whole ton of work against his entire team. Greninja is life orb with water shuriken. Tauros is scarfed to outspeed his entire team and yes i did check it is in fact eviewed and iv'd correctly to outspeed his team and then jolteon again just does a whole bunch of work this is a quick feet flame orb set which should outspeed his team it should outspeed rebombia plus two it should outspeed zygarde a plus one even though it can extreme speed but hopefully we get in in a decent position to be able to take it on i think this is a fairly short battle i believe it's about 17 turns or so let's just get into it i do believe that i just let off with a tauros maybe um, just trying to poke holes in the scene. Like I said, uh, the Scarf Tauros just outspeeds his entire team before any webs or um, or uh, quiver dances or any nonsense like that. So I just try to get damage off on his team. And right now, I'm thinking that I'm about to make a god tier play because I'm thinking in my head that he's going to willow with me turn one. And I'm going to be able to not have to reveal the flame orb right away by letting him burn me. And then uh getting that double speed straight away but he goes for the vault switch doesn't activate my vault absorb so he should know by now that i am in fact um quick feet so i do outspeed his entire team and i just do some damage calcs i figure out the thunderbolt is probably the best option for me it does a butt ton of damage and i and i am able to vault switch next turn no matter what now in this moment i actually found out that he um, well, not in this moment. After the match, I found out that he actually misclicked Bug Buzz. He meant to click Sticky Web, which kind of does stink a little bit, but I don't think it mattered a whole heck of a lot. I'm not too sure. Uh, I like to believe that I would have found an opportunity to rapid spin with Serena at some point in the match, but I just never get the chance to. It never actually ends up happening. So I just Volt Switch out, and I see from this absolutely abysmal uh, Rotom Mo damage that it has to be uh, pretty much max HP, max special defense. I was thinking Assault Vest at first, but I do see the leftover, so it's probably just like a positive special defense nature. I just know that this is as specially defensive as a Rotom can be built. I 100% know that. And so I go into um, this Soros again, thinking that I could scare it out again, but he ends up going for the Will-O-Wisp, which I did know was a risk, but I thought it was worth taking. I don't know. In any case, the first body slam does over half. The, the second body slam is going to do a whole butt ton of damage. So I'm feeling okay. I'm thinking in this situation, it's better off to get. I'm better off just getting damage in this situation. Later brings out the Zygarde, and obviously he's going to try to set up on me right now. But my thinking is, if I could just do enough, he's going to Dragon Dance. I get it. I totally get it, right? But um, my thinking is, I can just deal some damage in the situation. And if I get him low enough, just through body slam uh, chip damage, then I should be okay for later in the match. I do have the pile of swine. And look, I know from running my own Zygarde's uh, in the PGL that you often don't find the room for superpower. I probably would have in this matchup, but he told me he kind of overlooked pile of swine a little bit. So in this moment, I'm still feeling confident. He's only a plus one. He just thousand arrows my um, M'Baku, my Tauros. And I'm able to just bring in the pile of swine here, right? And he withdraws because he knows that I can ice start, icicle crash, whatever the case is. And it reveals to me that he doesn't have the superpower. I was confident enough that I could take a superpower either way, but I end up clicking icicle crash and he sacks off his Rotom Mo on that switch in. Perfectly reasonable play. Uh, totally fine, totally fine. I, If I was able to get up uh, rocks at any moment, it would have been pretty amazing but now this thing comes in and i'm and i was really fearing the superpower but the superpower did not do nearly enough i, I believe the superpower did like 50 percent um uh, with uninvested torn i was worried i was super worried about um z superpower um but he ended up having the supersonic sky strike and i did some like quick counts like as his animation because his animation is obviously like four years long but 
I did some quick calcs and it was supposed to do like only about half and it just does like I said about half and I was mind blown so I was able to icicle crash it does so much heckin damage to this tornadoes and um I believe at this point icicle uh, I, I'm sorry ice shard was like maxing out at about 45 percent or so so this was a guaranteed oko or guaranteed to a ko and I'm so so happy my pilot swine just fucking 1v1 a tornadoes my final pick in the draft is one of you wanted tornadoes and now he, he brings in the hound doom i'm totally fine with just sacking this thing off i was thinking about clicking stealth rocks just in case like he tried to pull anything any any nasty plot but i couldn't let him set up for free i could not let him set up for free so i had to get the damage off with the earthquake and the thick fat evil light ends up letting us take this fire blast now he didn't really have a choice because um dark pulse would have done even less than that but evil light thick fat and i do have just a tiny bit of special defense investment i knew it would come in the most possible clutch and we end up being able to take this thing out and i am ecstatically happy with the amount of work that pilot swine is putting in here and i actually misclicked here i meant to click ice shard um on this hound doom but he switches out and i like i said i completely accidentally clicked icicle shard icicle sh yeah icicle crash sorry and I do so much damage to this Lycan Rock, which is hugely helpful because now it lets like our ninja come in and revenge kill with water shuriken. I guaranteed outspeed, even if we both are at plus one priority, I will outspeed in this situation. And I'm so so happy with the work that my pilot swine did. Um now it would have been a complete god tier play if I had known that he was gonna switch out and I'd gone for stealth rocks because at least two of his Pokemon died to re-entry, I believe. So that would have meant the pile of swine would have gotten four KOs in this match off of those. But it doesn't end up happening, and he brings in his Zygarde, which I'm concerned about initially because of the Yachi Beer. I'm super concerned about Yachi Beer. Like I said, that damage from Tauros was huge because I did the calcs, and even through Yachi, I would have Oko'd from that range. I'm super excited about it. I'm thinking I'm in prime position just to ice beam no matter Yachi Berry or not. I take it out. Does an extreme speed. Maybe ex expected to scare me out. But then Water Shuriken is able to take out the Rebombi. And then Water Shuriken is able to take out the Hound Doom as well. I should have naturally outsped it, but I was kind of concerned about like Sucker Punch or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Greninja is able to pick up the final four KOs. And we win this match. 4-0. Pilot Swine took two KOs on its own. Pilot Swine 1v1 the Tornadus and it forced him to sack off the road of Motu. It. I could not have been happier with how Pilot Swine did in this match. And Meloetta and Serena never even had to touch the field, which was pretty wild. But like I said, I'd like to believe that at some point Serena would have found an opportunity to rapid spin away any potential webs but thankfully we ultimately did what we had to do it is an unfortunate misclick for him to go for bug buzz but at the same time Jolteon would have had a lot more HP so I could have played it differently a lot of things would have gone differently I'm still pretty confident that I would have won in this matchup especially with Pilos one just being a monster and Greninja just having this matchup after his team was weakened but yeah this absolutely clinches us a spot in the UBL playoff and I did actually find out that Hawk coach of the Chelsea Celio did have the two seed all locked away, but he is going to be dropping. He won't be going into the playoffs. So that actually pushes us up into the number two seed position. So next week, we're going to take on the three seed in the opposite conference. We are in the Ultra Moon Conference, and we're going to take on the number three seed in the Ultra Sun Conference. And this is crazy exciting. This is our third league season ever, and it's going to be our first playoff run. And just mathematically, I already know that I'm either going to be taking on Nidor again, the coach of the Death Valley Hound Dooms, who we played, I believe, in week nine, or Irish. Emerald, coach of the Wexford Waylords, whom we have never played, but he is absolutely a good battler and he's a force to be reckoned with. Hopefully we can come through in that one as well. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll be back really, really soon with more PGL matches. Sorry for being late with this PGL upload, but it will be coming. It's really, really soon. Like I said, we will be going through with the UBL playoffs, but once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be once again out.